Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of To Debate, your podcast of debate. And we start recording and Sebastian starts smiling. This just makes the whole the whole debate uh, more high pressure for me because he smiles that smile. winning that winning smile that oh damn i'm so prepared i'm gonna crush you dirk smile no <laughs> it's, it's not that but um the thing is what i had in on on my mind is sounds so sad that i'm not sure i should say because <laughs> you said it's another episode and i said yes it's another episode i'm still alive um uh, not sure it's the best thing to say but the reason the reason is because we chatted for half an hour before recording this episode and part of the discussion where it was around health uh, so yeah that, i guess uh, you you're the you're the, the 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 one who is demanding eternal life here in this debate uh, in this true. podcast so have you found the elixir the potion the medicine yeah the, see let's see let's see who's faster either science or black magic will provide us with uh with the elixir to eternal life so who who is going to try black magic from the two of us? I'm I'm fairly what scientific. So you so are you I don't know, biting off heads of chickens and killing oh, that's easy. cows killing what? at moonlight and uh <sighs> eating sugar pills. I guess those three things are the main <laughs> rituals that you use in black magic. Maybe I, maybe I can do the third thing. You can do the third <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> so and now i'm really curious how we segue from black magic and uh, eating sugar pills after you slaughtered innocent chickens to our motion today which literally has nothing to do with the topic that it I has. Just, Let, yeah. no, i will try to do the transition okay uh, black i think it's the color of the logo all right uh, headless chicken moving around from in, within the city that's to me to yeah <laughs> Right? Yes, that's me then. That's me in a foreign city. Okay. For instance, and the magic that it all seems to work somehow. By the press of a button. Perfect. By the press of a button. This is black magic of headless chicken going yeah. from point A to point B. Yeah, and they call it Uber Black, right? <laughs> Even that. <laughs> yeah, it's true that it's Uber Black in some markets. Uh, maybe it's not a, like, not a great name, actually. Yeah, so um, we we going to ta discuss a, a economy. Uh, we we going to discuss an economics topic today. So the motion for today and our segue is just brilliant, I would say. So people actually <laughs> don't need me rephrasing the motion for them anymore, but I do it anyway. Uber will never be profitable is the motion today and the flip of the coin made it so that I'm going to be for that motion. So I'm going to argue Uber will never be profitable and you are against it and you are going first. Are you That's ready? Correct. And, the, and the reason why we debated is because Uber uh, had their IPO, what, two, three weeks ago now? And, uh, well, it was kind of a disaster, to say the least, in terms of the stock market price, which fell immediately and still has not been above the opening price. And part of the reasons which were invoked by analysts was that, well, Uber is not making a profit. Far from it. It's actually losing more than a billion dollars every three months. So the <laughs> yeah. question arises, will, ever, will it ever be profitable? So that's why we thought it could be interesting to debate. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. For 12 years, it was not profitable. It built an infrastructure, a network, and it generated massive amounts of revenue. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Amazon. For 12 years, it was making huge losses. In the case of Uber, also making huge losses, but revenue tripled over the past two years to $11 billion. It's covering almost the entire planet, 700 cities, 60 countries. Scale matters. There are network effects which create large barriers to entry. There is competition. Yes, there is competition in almost every market that Uber ha has entered. But no one can match its scale, at least so far. And Uber is not just about ride sharing. It's building an infrastructure which can expand into multiple areas, multiple industries. And already it is expanding into these areas. Food delivery, e-scooters, freight, self-driving vehicles, aviation, and whatnot. 
So it has truly been transformational in becoming a global transportation company. And it's very similar to another company, which you may remember, which some of you are maybe subscribing to. Uh, it's called Netflix. Initially, it was a barely or non-profitable DVD shipping business. Not very profitable because you had to ship these DVDs, which could get scratched and, well, it's just a physical product. And then they moved onto online video streaming today. And the strategy, very similar to Uber, is to be in every household for Netflix. In the case of Uber, for everyone to think of Uber when you want to take a taxi. In fact, you do say that. I want to take an Uber, just like you say you're Googling something when you're looking for something on the internet. And I think they've already achieved that. Um, so overall, I really think that Uber has enough avenues to think of how they can become profitable. And right now, it's just building this, building this massive critical mass of users and brand recognition on top of a very varied and well-functioning infrastructure. So fair enough, it's not profitable, but it will be at some point. Just give it time. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. Uber is building infrastructure and venturing into additional fields of business, you say. I sure as hell hope they do, because they burn through billions of dollars each quarter. I hope they do something with that money. You mentioned Netflix, you mentioned Amazon. You know what the difference between Uber and Netflix and Amazon and all the others is? There's actually a proven business model. In fact, Amazon was sitting on top of a working business model. They knew it will work. They did the math. They had examples of this business model working in the past and all they had to do was scaling it out to be really disruptive and to really have that network effect. And yes, then investing tons and tons of money to achieve that scale, yeah, that is a good business strategy. Now, Uber is disrupting a sector that has proven over and over, and that's seriously, that's my number one main and probably only argument that I need, that transportation is not profitable when left unregulated, especially not personal transportation. There's a reason why taxi services spark up in like really big numbers and why they usually are disastrous for the drivers, for the cars, for the whole sector. They are easy to spin up. People that are desperate try it. Then you have a lot of supply that hits less demand. Prices are falling. No one is making any money out of this. This is exactly the reason why taxis are regulated pretty much everywhere on this planet. Now, Uber is fighting for for uh, for years and years now, any form of regulation for that very reason. So the number one disruption that they brought is they found a way to ignore regulation for pretty uh, 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 an impressively long time. And now that they have to um, follow regulations in more and more countries after being having been banned in some cities and so on, prices go up for them. And guess what? When prices go up, then they are not looking that nice compared to the competition all of a sudden anymore, which costs even more money. Right now, they burn through a billion each quarter. By the way, Lyft, their main competitor, is doing the same thing. And it's just not a sustainable business model, no matter how much we desire it to be. So no, Uber will never be profitable because the dynamic of the market says so. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. Let's go through your various points. Are they doing something with the money? Well, that's, I think, what I try to explain. They're trying to build this infrastructure and brand recognition. And I think they've achieved most of that. I think they're on the cusp of uh, having enough brand recognition that they can go into different areas, different industries or related industries and be able to make a profit somehow out of all this. I say somehow, and I'll talk about your second point, which was about Amazon had a proven business model. I'm not sure this is exactly true. They started off Amazon with selling books online and then got, got into other retailing areas. But even the retail part of Amazon today, the one where everyone goes to or most people know about, is actually not making that much of a profit. It's actually tiny where Amazon is making most of its profit, and maybe some of our listeners are not aware of that, is its cloud business. It's when enterprises use Amazon as their cloud solution uh, to have their data. So I'm not sure at the very beginning, Jeff Bezos had the idea of the cloud aspect. I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. I'm, I'm not certain of it. I think it came as a, as, a, as a secondary effect as time went by. 
um, and funded everything else. And I think Uber is doing something similar. They maybe don't know exactly what they will become, but they're build, building this network, this infrastructure, which on top of, they can build so many different things. Just like Amazon has built, had built this retail business on top of a huge network, a net of, uh, of server, servers um, and allowing to process millions of products at the same time. On the regulation aspect, so I think that's interesting. Indeed, Uber has ignored regulation, but they brought on a new CEO, uh, which last name is probably more complicated my, than my own, my own family name. And he has tried to be much more friendly to regulation and to listen, to, make, to be much more humble. But I will say one thing. You said prices may go up. And it's funny because I actually anticipated that in, uh, and, and saying that if we just look at this and at any day, even if Uber starts respecting regulation, which I assume it is, otherwise it would be declared illegal, and it has been declared illegal in a few cities, but let's say it is properly regulated and lawful and legal and, and everything. Right now, Uber is making losses because it is subsidizing rides for passengers and drivers. And the final price would probably be in the same range or maybe slightly lower than a regular taxi. But the problem is the difference with a regular taxi is now you can pay with a credit card. And I have to say this, but in France, until Uber existed, sometimes they would not take your credit card. You had to pay in cash, right? Or they would not put the meter, right? Or it would not be safe or it would not be clean. Now, and we had another debate about this, about rating drivers, but you have created that safe environment. At least most people, even if you don't like the Uber brand because of all the issues that surround the brand, I think most people feel comfortable in an Uber, maybe more than just a random taxi. And this is maybe the, the, the power that Uber has and which will make it more profitable. And unlike Lyft, Lyft is purely a ride-sharing platform. That's it. They're not engaging in other areas of food delivery and freight and aviation. So I worry more about Lyft if we were to talk about this. Lyft may actually never be profitable, but Uber will be because they are building an infrastructure on which they're plugging different industries. Right? A taxi driver for Uber could actually be delivering a parcel at the same time as driving a passenger from point A to point B. Let's see. But overall, I think Uber has many chances to be profitable. Next up, Dirk. Yeah, Uber tries to get through with ignoring regulation and circumventing market dynamics long enough so it's big enough so it's may start to make money somewhere. I, I get that tactics. I would argue if you give me billions of dollars, that's what I could do as well. I start doing, I don't know, start launching a rocket business, doing some book sending, movie, whatever business and enough stuff on the side that at some point something's going to be profitable. I'm not surprised by that tactic, uh, to be honest. Most of the areas uh, Uber is venturing into are actually not profitable unless you're the biggest player in that market. And I have significant doubts if Uber, even with those billions of dollars, has a chance to really take some of the big fishes in the pond that are in, in let's say, freight transportation or some of the other areas you mentioned. So the one thing where Uber really managed to get a foot in the door is personal transportation. And the only way for Uber to be really competitive is uh, as long as it's uh, able to have lower pricing rights than the established competition can offer. And the way this is, uh, um, is getting killed in some markets is by means of regulation. Now, you could argue if Uber at some point managed to push everybody out of the market before regulation kicks in and then being the biggest player in that market, then they can dictate prices and then maybe make some profit. But there is a big, big question mark on this. And just by arguing, yeah, it's investing, it's building up and see how many businesses it's spinning up. That's not the same thing as having a sustainable business model, which Uber, I have to say right now, has not. Now, we can keep throwing billions of dollars into Uber's direction. This is exactly what happens. Actually, Uber right now, it, uh, I wonder if it's just too big to fail at this moment because they have so many people, money sink into that company. So it keep, it keep pulling in money for the sake of trying to make some profit someday. So it probably at some point is going to start building, I don't know, a bakery business or a, a uh, t-shirt business or whatnot. Uh, I can see uh, Uber movies being produced and it's uh, trying to fight off Netflix dominance in the market again, whatnot. I, 
I do say say though, um, unless Uber really manages to be dominant in the most and all the important markets, which I don't think will ever happen, they will burn money for the foreseeable future. And they already burned an impressive amount of money. They're never going to get this money back. There are literally a billion per quarter that's that's going out of the window. And uh, Lyft is paying the other billion a quarter that's going out of the window in the Lyft side. I don't know where this should end, but uh, it surely doesn't end in a, in a profitable business model. And it will never end with a model that's really making Uber a player that is more than a recognized brand, which you at some point can sell to somebody else and somebody else is using that brand for their own benefit then. <laughs> Final statements. Sebastian, let's hear it. I will conclude with three aspects. Not every startup in this world gets billions of dollars. In the case of Uber, you have many very serious professional investors, many big banks who have decided to give money to the startup because they have done their due diligence. That doesn't mean they're right. Things can fail. That is true. But this gives a bit of credence, credibility to the startup in particular. The second aspect, building a brand is not that easy. Going from scratch and being known across the planet is not nothing. And that's why I don't think Uber is just about pricing, even though as a consumer, and even I, I'm very sensitive to it, I would go to Uber and would think I would easily switch to some uh, competitor if the competitor is, is cheaper. That is true. But it's not just about pricing. It's also about the brand recognition, which leads me to the third aspect. Uber is not number one in every market. There's Gojek and Grab and Southeast Asia. And that's why Uber exited the market. Same in Eastern Europe. You have Bolt, X-Taxify. In China, or same likewise. Uber got out of the market. But Uber has managed to become number one globally. Nobody has built a scale that Uber has built so far, which means... Even though they're probably going to increase their prices, what would you do? If it's the same price as a regular taxi, if we talk about a taxi business or we can talk about food delivery, would you go with a regular taxi or with Uber? I want to think you're going to go with Uber because you've been loyal to that company for many years. You know how it works. It's easy. It's simple. It's an app. And your credit card details are already stored. And these economies of scale that Uber has built or is building, other small players will never have. So their unit cost will be higher. So I do think that Uber is likely to be much more profitable than any other business in those industries. Dirk. So to sum it up, you say, oh, so many people invest so much money into, into Uber. Surely they know what they are doing. This is going to be profitable at some point. Remember the little startup called Jawbone? Jawbone was the startup that came before Fitbit. It was hailed as the one company that's going to sort this wearable business for once and for all and give us um, very good uh, industry standard health-driven wearables. They had a $1 billion investment and they tanked. I have a list here with the 120 most costly startup failures of all time. They all have the same stories. They were very impressive in the original idea, claimed to be disruptive, people believed in them. The more people invested in them, the more others followed investing even more money in them because those who came before that couldn't be wrong, right? So they know what they are doing. If you invest 1 million and invest another 10, um, in the end, they, ca they ended up with billions of dollars and they tanked. And this is exactly what we observe right Right now with Uber. Why? Because the business model Uber claims to have uh, disrupted and the market Uber claims to dominate. First off, they are not dominating it, not by a long, uh, long stretch. Secondly, they're not disrupting it. They just uh, circumvent existing market forces and they catch up with them. And third, if they are really forced to compete at fair prices, they cannot afford it. So there is no sustainable business model. They're going to tank it. It's never going to be a profitable model. So what do you think? I really think, uh, I, I honestly, when Uber started, I looked at this and said, this is not a business model, this is a ripoff. The pure fact that Uber worked that way, and I agree, as a consumer, I loved it. As a consumer, they 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 brought they brought an app to the market that actually worked. Taxi companies didn't bother to bring an app that was manageable to the point when Uber started doing that. Then they copied it. Um, 
uh, payment. Payment was a pain in taxis. Since Uber, it's not a pain anymore. So all these things, granted, Uber brought this, but those were not the disruptions. Uber claimed these were the disruptions. Those were not the disruptions. Some of the things that potentially could have been disruptions, like being being a driver sharing model as well, they will go away in about 10 years time when we start having self-driving fleets of uh, uh, um, uh, transportation services. Um, Uber tries to have a stake in that, but they have car companies a thing or two to say about this as well. And you're not telling me that Uber also tries to compete with Mercedes, Audi, BMW and Tesla. Um, so there is a whole market waiting for uh, to eat up Uber that they didn't touch yet. Um, and at the same time, the, the profits they were making were dependent on them not paying insurance, not taking care of the driver, not taking care of tech in the cars. So they basically drove around in private cars, which was, by the way, as a user appealing. So I liked the fact that I was driving in a in a fancy private-owned car that was uh, taken care of. Now, today's Uber, it's a shitty car with somebody who has no other job but, uh, but to drive Uber. And it's not making the, the uh, it's not making minimum wage anymore because that's the way how to compete and it has to work crazy hours because otherwise Uber sorts them out and if he's not smiling all the time then we bitch him by giving him one or two stars and then he's throw out as well. So this whole this whole business model is not only a rip off, it's not only not profitable, it's also something where I feel really bad about. And the reason for this is pretty obvious. And if you look into that, there has been a whole history history book is full of stories where where people when they were desperate tried to do business models like this and it never really worked until regulation kicked in and the same thing is true here they're just making more money than the regular taxi thing and that's my real opinion <laughs> what about if uber imagine five years from now uh has replaced all the human drivers by self-driving cars would you feel the same way it's assume assume there that it's legal. Assume it's all fine and regulated. But do you still feel the same way? If they transition gradually to a self-driving vehicle mode, I have doubts if they really can make that in a profitable way. But surely that's what they try. That's their that's their imagined finish line. The finish line they try to build for themselves is that they get over that point that they can build physical infrastructure that generates money for them within regulations and all that. But uh, I, as I said, we forget a lot of players right now, and that's a lot more than just a billion a quarter, and it's it's a lot more than just taxi services. Um, if I if I look at the fleets that are being built up right now, the car sharing services that are built in pretty much every major cities, those are not built by Uber. Those are not bought by Uber. This is this is the future of the car manufacturing industry. So the the Volkswagens and uh, Fords of this world and the Hyundai's of this world, they see a, t a future coming where they don't have where they don't sell cars to you and me anymore, but they have to have fleets of self-driving cars, and they prepare right now for this future. And this is a future Uber cannot yet afford. And the moment Uber actually can afford building that future, they are already there. So I, I just don't see that happening. Uh, maybe I'm completely wrong. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not claiming that I, I fully grasp the market. But I look at this and I know it's just it continued to burn money for the next couple of years, and then at some point they're going to say, yeah, sorry, it didn't work out. That's what I'm expecting. What do you really think? Um. There's one thing that I, I, I read which made me think, and I wonder to what extent the, the following statement is going to be more or less valid to what, to what you just exposed, and that's the fact that the CEO is not the founder anymore. And the reason why, why I bring this up is because there is some questioning going on around whether CEOs who are not the founders tend to be more conservative, i.e. less risk-taking, i.e may try to run a business as if it's profitable and it's not and massively not profitable right now and actually that may be the biggest limit limitation to uber is their gradual lack of desire to take risks mm. and when you're maybe the ceo founder of your company well you're very bold right you try and go in one way and another way and it's your baby right you're trying to make it work um so i think there's some and it has not been picked up too much by the press right now because the CEO of Uber has a very good opinion in the press and it has a good image. But uh, I read a bit of this and it made me think. And I'm actually wondering if that's going to be the biggest hurdle to be, for the company to become profitable. 
because I think they've achieved brand recognition. It's a bit like Facebook. I think they've lost in terms of the positivity around their brand because of all the scandals and what have you. But still, it's a recognizable brand, just like Facebook. Everyone knows Uber. Everyone knows Facebook. Yeah. And that's valuable. Right? You can sell that brand, uh, whether as a company to another company or when you want to sell products. And I think that's, I think the scaling problems that they're they're faced with in terms of building this network is a valuable lesson that they that they've taught themselves and that's why if they're innovative maybe in 10 years time they will have nothing to do with vehicles right or the way that we see it today and i i don't know i if they can pivot in a way that allows them to do that they'll find a way to be to be profitable and it's, it's a bit what you said earlier also like is it too big to fail it's, I'm, I'm wondering if because it has like there was so much money put into it, you really want to lose like seventy billion dollars of <laughs> money that was poured into the company? It's mind-boggling, right? Graveyards yeah. are filled with companies that claim to do the same thing. So when we say, "Oh but yeah," they're not, not with the same amount of money. No, no, right? I mean, I mean not literally, not like also doing a ride-sharing service or anything. I mean, like there are literally companies that claim, "Oh yeah, we're investing right now in the future infrastructure and we venture in." It, you, if you're a little bit more cynical, I'm sometimes cynical, um, then I could say, yeah, they are desperate and they throw the money at the wall until something sticks and then they claim that was the play, uh, plan all along. And that, of course, invites survivor buyers, right? It's like when for every company that you find that did that, Amazon was an example you gave. Like, oh, crap, we have these servers and it turns out we can make money with them. Oh yeah, that was the plan all along, of course. If you do this kind of model, uh, for every company you find where this worked and made them rich and uh, made them uh, a, a profitable player in the market, you find 10 others that, that completely sank. And they are not, they are, it's crazy expensive, but not expensive enough yet. I think, uh, you know, there are there have been crazy uh, value, uh, valued companies out there that also vanished uh, i just the the co the companies of the first age of uh, of the web uh, come to mind you know the yahoos of this world they they have been sometimes even found a lot and all that and they still manage to come from from world dominating super company to nothing in in a in a decade or so and i do think the same can happen to uber and yes they invest in a lot of things right now as does Elon Musk. I wonder I wonder what happens with all his companies the moment when he says, Yeah, I'm not in doing business anymore. I'm I'm now back in my in my big house and I count my millions until I die. I, I'm pretty sure uh, the companies he leaves behind disintegrate the moment he's he's not there as a front figure anymore, which tells you something about their business model. That's fair enough. It's true that uh, there was a lot of discussion about why the current stock market bubble or pricing is not the same as the dot-com one because there's more emphasis on making money as mm -hmm. opposed to the dot-com startups which were not profitable. But I think there's one thing that that you, you're maybe neglecting actually, I'm just thinking of, uh, out loud at the same time is that in this case Uber is generating a lot of revenue, it's just not profitable. Right? In a dot-com bubble I think they were not making revenue in the first place. It was loss making startups, but the revenue was also tiny because the internet user was just not there yet. Right? So right now the revenue is like massively expanding. It's actually crazy. Right? The the losses also. But it seems that if you can I don't know, it's I guess I guess it's a trust aspect, right? Investors, how long can they wait until they waited twelve years with Amazon and it was worth it. Um, <laughs> can you wait twelve years with uh, with Uber? I don't know. I don't know either. As I said, I have I have doubts, but hey, let's let's revisit the debate in 12 years, and then we know it. <laughs> then then we can debate if you or I were right all along because they've been sold for some crazy amount of money, and then we cannot agree if they actually are profitable now or not. <laughs> anyway, shall we wrap up? Let's uh, wrap up. What? Uh did our listeners, what did you listeners think of our arguments? Um, I'm pretty sure you've used Uber or an equivalent in your country uh, because of these car sharing, car ride sharing services exist virtually everywhere from Kenya to Nigeria to Indonesia. 
to the US, to Canada, to virtually every country in Europe. So it's very likely that you have used those. But regardless of having used those services, what did you think of our arguments? This is the whole point of voting. And for voting, you have to go, you have to visit <laughs> to debate.eu and thumbs up if you're in agreement with Dirk that the company will never be profitable and thumbs down if you agree with me that it will be profitable one day, maybe, hopefully. Yeah. And from today on, I'm going to make a point out of adding to debate.eu as a link to the notes. So when you use your podcatcher and you look at the notes that the podcatcher shows you, there is a link. Not every podcatcher allows you to click on it. So sometimes you have to do a copy paste, but Ooh, I trust you to do that as an extra for <laughs> us, right? So, um, yes. Uh, if you don't do that, we're going to start charging you. <laughs> <laughs> is that an incentive? Uh, no, we, we do an IPO and see how much billions they give us for, for running this podcast. <laughs> well, right now we're subsidizing the podcast. Yes. But you're subsidizing it. Mostly, <laughs> yeah. To be honest. <laughs> that's, that's not the listener. Let's not confuse it. Not that the listener said, no, I'm not oh, subscribing you, you, to this yeah. if I have to pay for that. No, it's free for the listeners, but not for us. So all we want as a, as, as a little... little uh, Thank you. Is that little mighty click on the massage. button? Oh, no, not, yeah, it's not. You this. like the free massage. I take the click <laughs> on the button. Who do you support, dear listener? <laughs> <laughs> if you're in an in a, in a Uber right now and you feel like supporting my side of the debate, a click is enough. If you want to support Sebastian, click on my button in the meantime and go and have a, give him a massage next time you see him. <laughs> All right. All right. And with this, you have an excellent rest of your day or your night if you're about to sleep. Thank you. Have a good day or night, Sebastian, if you're about to sleep. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, oh my. <clears throat> Moment. Here's that strike of genius. Actually, I need a timer. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do this more often. If we if we I was I had that weird feeling. There's something missing here on my screen and it was the timer. All right. Two minutes. <laughs>